one of the disputes is, and I think it's a notable argument, um, is, let's see if I can find the word. Okay, let's just go back to verse number one. Chapter number six, it says, now this time, while the disciples were increasing the number of complaint arose on the part of the Hellenistic Jews against the native Hebrews because of the widows were being overlooked in the daily serving of food. So the twelve sons of the congregation of the disciples and said, It is not desirable for us to neglect the word of God in order to serve the table. So yeah, that's the word that I want to um, draw attention to is the latter part where it talks about serving table, serve tables. And um, this word serve comes from the Greek word that I can know. I'll give you I give you the uh, spelling D I A K N no D I A K O N E O. And um, the word in its truest form and its rawest form um, means to serve means to minister and um, the argument is this doesn't necessarily have to be um, the installation or the ordination of the first deacons because the truth of the matter God has called all of us to serve called us all to minister God has called us all to serve in uh, one capacity or another um, I think we can best see that um, first Peter. Let's, let's just turn it over real quick. First Peter. Yeah, chapter number four. And we'll begin our reading verse number 10. And by the way, I'm just flying over this. I, I didn't mention it, and I just wanted to mention it um, before we go into the latter half of chapter number six. But verse number 10. Tells us it says as each one has received a special gift, employ it and serve them one another as good stewards over of the manifold grace of God. And then the Bible says in verse number eleven, whoever speaks is to do so as one who is speaking the utterance of God. As if you can you got the King James version, they say minister, doesn't it? Oracle, Oracle. Oracle. Um, some say minister, um, but it says, who, whoever serves, he is to do so as one who is serving by the strength which God supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs the glory and dominion forever and ever and ever. Amen. Mm -hmm. We mentioned it on Sunday, the fact that one of the last things that Jesus demonstrated to his disciples was to serve. And um, anybody remember the illustration or how Jesus demonstrated how to serve? And wash the feet. Yeah, when he began mm -hmm. to wash the feet. And what was Peter's objection? He said he thought he was too good to wash his feet. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and go into that whole dialogue. Maybe. He said, "Wash, wash everything else." <laughs> uh, wash everything else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, Jesus said, "Unless I wash your feet, you have no part mm -hmm. in this matter with me." And then once Peter, that restaurant Peter, he said, "Don't just wash my feet. <laughs> wash my head. Wash my hands." And Jesus said, "No, we ain't about to give you no bath. You can go home and take a bath." But this is enough, me washing your feet, because I'm just setting the principle that me being a master, being willing to serve, yeah. we have to have the capacity and we have to have the attitude that, you know, no job, I, I, you, I, I need to look that song up, but no job too big, no job too small. Where father and son, that's a Midwest commercial, it's just etched in my brain, it, they embedded in my brain. It was a heating and cooling company, they, they, that commercial came on daily. No <laughs> job too big. No job too small. We got one here for I guess. Okay. Yeah. Same thing, though. Right, right. So, you know, 
Um, we get the picture. You know, we are not to get to the point where we feel that service is below us. Mm -hmm. um, Jesus, that's one of the things that he was trying to break down the hierarchy. He was trying to break down us looking down on folks, Pharisees, Sadducees, that type of attitude. Um, don't get caught up in titles. Don't get caught up in, uh, you know, being seen by men and um, the pompous that come by sin by men. But he said at the end of the day, when you do it, work as if you're working unto the Lord. And he says what what you do in secret, God sees it and he will reward you openly. So that's, that's the thing that we have to keep in mind when we serve. Sometimes, you know, we do a good deed. We do something for the Lord. Our name may not be called out. And I heard some people say, don't call my name, which is okay. But we, at the end of the day, when we do, if, if, if we do acknowledge someone's name, um, it should be just encouragement. It should be acknowledging that that was a good deed, you know, but it's not so the fact where I'm not doing it unless my name is called. You know, that's, that's <laughs> what, you know, it, it's set in where, you know, I ain't doing it. They ain't acknowledge me. They talked about her uh, pound cake and I brought two, I brought a pound cake too. You know, you know how we do. Or, you know, uh, I, I preached a sermon and they ain't talking about my sermon, but they talking about his sermon. You know, God sees it. He sees our heart. He sees why we're doing it. And he said that he will reward us openly. But anyway, I just want to pass over that fact that all of us are called to serve. And when they called on these men, they called them for a particular a particular task. Now, in the latter part of chapter number six, we, we read it already, but uh, I said we was going to go back. And if someone wanted to expound on it or ask a question regarding it, we seen where um, Stephen full of faith as the Bible said mm -hmm. um, he you know he was talking about Jesus he was talking about the spirit and then we found in verse number 11 there was some stubborn men um, they heard it they thought he was uh, speaking blasphemous words against Moses and against God and then uh, the Bible says in one verse that they could not deny they could not deny uh, resist. First of the says they can resist the wisdom of the spirit by which he spake. So they conjured up some false charges against Stephen. Mm -hmm. Stirred up the crowd, stirred up the elders, stirred up the scribes, and um, they brought false witnesses against him. And then by the end of the chapter, I'm going to just read verse number 14 and 15. It says, for we have heard him say, that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council looking steadfastly on him saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Now, um, what I want to point out is they made false accusations against Jesus. Jesus never said some of the things that they were accusing him of. Um, matter of fact, remember on a couple of occasions when they questioned, they said, you said you're the king of the Jews? Jesus said, what do you say? You say I'm the king of the Jews, right? Uh, and it was, it was quite a, if, if you go back to the trial of Jesus, they even brought false witnesses against him to crucify him as well. And now Stephen is experiencing the same thing that Jesus experienced. But one of the things that I want to point out is the fact that the Bible says in verse number 15, his face, um, as it, it, let me go back, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Um, what comes to mind when I read that verse, it conjures up the effect and you know the presence of God had on Moses when he went up on Mount Sinai y'all remember he was in the presence of God for 40 days and 40 nights what happened yeah yeah and, and, and remember the children they said 
put a veil over his face because <laughs> he's so bright because he's been in the presence of God, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but the Bible talks about when they looked at Stephen, and here's the thing, see, <laughs> it just make it, it just make it more devious. Mm-hmm. He looked at like an angel, number one. They could not deny the wisdom in the spirit, but yet and still they choose to carry out um, this miscarriage of justice. They they chose to carry out um, these, you know, conjured up charges. Mm-hmm. And and I pray, and you know, I pray, I, I, I know as long as I stay under the word of God, I'm gonna get there, but I dread the day when you just know the truth and you still, as I said, you know, you tell one lie, you gotta, you gotta carry the lie out and see it to his end. I'd rather repent, let, let the chips <coughs> fall where they may, and God, give me a new start. God, don't let me die in this. Don't let me die in this lie. Don't let me keep keeping up a front. Lord, let the chips fall where they may, you know, I'm looking for reconciliation, but I, I know this is true. And, and that, that's kind of how I became a Christian. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it was some things that was mind-boggling. Like, what? This what the word say? Huh? I, I ain't never seen that in the Bible. I've been, I've been around religion, but I ain't never read that. And this what the word say? Mm-hmm. Now, either when that situation happened, either you can carry on believing a lie, or you can get right with God and begin to embrace the truth. Jesus said it this way. He said, the truth shall set you free. Mm-hmm. And he said, you shall know the truth. Mm-hmm. Amen. He said, you shall know the truth. But the thing is, when the truth is revealed to us, we can't have our hearts in such a position where we're trying to save face. I ain't got no reputation to protect. I was ignorant. I was blind. Now I see. Mm-hmm. Right? Amen. I, what, I, what, what I got to protect that I was blind for? Oh, I wasn't blind. I wasn't blind. You was blind. <laughs> I wasn't blind. I can see. Really? Mm-hmm. I, I can see. No, you won't. You was blind until God enlightened you and opened up your eyes. Mm-hmm. Why you can't acknowledge that? Mm-hmm. Right? You was in sin until God brought you out of sin. What, what's wrong with acknowledging that? That's what we need a savior for. Amen. Oh, I was all right. I ain't really need no. T- the Bible say you are lie and the truth <laughs> made it. That's what the Bible said. <laughs> the Bible said. The Bible said confess your sin. Amen. And he's worthy to forgive you. He said you you say you don't have no sins. He said you're a liar. Because you're trying to make God a liar. That's why the Bible tells us all have sinned. I'm and sure. fall short of the glory, glory of God. God. I know we're in the South, but it don't say y'all. It say all. Oh. <laughs> y'all have sinned. That's how we think something. Y'all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I'm good. All have sinned. All, <laughs> all of us need to say. And, and as we study the uh, book of Acts, we're going to see where, you know, Saul was sincere in his belief. Brought up religiously. But it was some things that he didn't know, he was ignorant to, and when God enlightened him and opened up his eyes, he said he could have continued in the way that he was going, fighting against God, or he can submit and start working on the team of God. You know, and, and you know, when we look at this, these men who Stephen is preaching to, they had the opportunity to change. That's why God is so just, too. Okay, okay, I, I don't want to stay here this long, but that's why God is so just. Because he gives us chance, opportunity, over, over, and over again. <laughs> Do you not know the God that we serve? He created everything in six days, rested on the seventh. So that means that everything cooperated. I'm talking about stuff that we admire, the sun. Mm-hmm. How hot is the sun, y'all? Yeah. Real hot. Real hot. <laughs> how, how hot is the sun? But it, it was obedient mm-hmm. to the word of God. 
how, how vast and how majestic is the moon and the clouds and um, the earth and the water. All this stuff cooperated in a six-day period. God show up, <laughs> send us message after message mm -hmm. while we're in the crater. Amen. You, you, need, you know, follow me. In, in elementary school, don't, don't be stealing. Don't be skipping school. Be obedient to your parents. Be obedient to your teachers. Yeah, we were bad. Amen. Middle school. God, y'all, come on, y'all. Y'all ain't never been there. Oh, y'all just was right on time. Okay. Yeah. My bud looking like he just got out of monastery somewhere. No, but, <laughs> but, but <laughs> you weren't raised in a temple like Samuel. But, but, but here's the thing. God give us a chance. And that's, that's why, you know, that's why I don't mind praising God. Because I know it's only his grace and mercy that got me. Amen. He could have mm -hmm. took me out a long time ago. I know I'm young, but still. He could have, really, he could have called me an account. The, the age of accountability, he could have called me an account. When I learn how to do right for wrong, when I, when I do, this is how you know when you know how to do right for wrong. When you take something and you try to hide it. Mm -hmm. If you know you ain't doing nothing wrong, you don't hide it. Mm -hmm. A baby who don't do nothing wrong, they'll walk out the store with something because it ain't nothing wrong to them. But once you get to an age where you know you got to hide and you got to play it off for your parents and you hope the store clerk ain't looking, now you are the age of accountability. Mm -hmm. you, need, you need the blood of Jesus Amen. to atone for your sins. Amen. So when I look back on my life, I look back on my life and God gave me a chance after chance. And some of y'all, y'all say, well, I ain't never stole nothing. Good for you. You thought about stuff. <laughs> that could have that killed you. Jesus said, you ain't even got to commit it. If it's in your heart, that can send you to hell. Yeah. So, so it, it's just to our advantage that we acknowledge that we were sinners and we sin from time to time and we're in need of a savior. Even on Sunday, we got a high priest. That's the point of us having a high priest. Okay, I'm about to leave y'all alone. But y'all remember in the Old Testament, the high priest, one of the functions of the high priest, let's just say if you committed a crime unintentionally, mm -hmm. if you killed someone by mistake or you did something unintentionally, God has set it up where he has set up cities of refuge. Mm -hmm. And you can flee to the city of refuge and he say remain there as long as the high priest is alive, you are saved in the city of refuge. Oh, don't miss this. This is good. But Jesus is our high priest. The Hebrew writer said that he entered into heaven never to die. So we forever in the city of refuge because Jesus ain't going to die. Under the Levitical uh, priesthood, the, the Levites died off. And a high priest had to be replaced. But Jesus is there. Oh, I thought that was good news right there. Amen. Amen. Because Jesus ain't dying. So Satan, you ain't going to get me. Amen. I'm Satan in his arms. Amen. So we're going to go into chapter number seven. Any comments, any questions in chapter number six? Sister McCutcheon, you got your hand up? I do. Um, mm -hmm. And you was talking about confession of your sin. And I was just want to make a comment on that. If you never confess your sin, that means you never admit your sin. So now, but if when you confess, that releases you of that bondage. Amen. If you never confess, you're going to be bound. Like you say, telling a lie, you're going to be telling a lie for the rest of the days until you admit that you did lie. Now it's out and open. It, you know, it, I don't know, you know, it's, it's too, it's too um, strenuous or it's too much work yeah. Keep on lying. You gotta work to keep the lie that one. You gotta work to keep lying and keep getting. Yeah. You gotta keep working at it, and and, and that, you know, it's too much of a strain on the soul, really, because you're never gonna grow. Yeah. You're never gonna get out of that little little rut there that you that the lie you told or whatever you you know <laughs> hiding. Just you're never gonna get out of that rut. So you can't you can't grow for Christ. You can't grow spiritually. Because you got to stop hitting And even if you're Christian, you you know, you, you can't even, it's too much energy. Like, when you, you know, it's just too much energy to be going through all that stuff right now. Ooh. 
Brother Fudd. Um, that group of accusers that the religious leaders put together to speak against Samuel is most likely that same group that put together to speak against Jesus in, in Matthew chapter 25. Uh, I'm thinking that the same group that just pulled that group over and now y'all <laughs> talking against this man here now. sure if it's in chapter 6, but um, I, I believe it was in chapter number 4. I don't want to go back there, but they had mentioned um, uh, one of their names was Caiaphas, as I remember he was one of them, but he was one of the same people with Jesus, but not, they didn't mention it in chapter 6 with Stephen. Um, this was a different group. Um, matter of fact, they talked about these were the free men, and uh, scholars were saying that these were once Jews who were enslaved to Africa or Asia who came back to Palestine. So this is a different group in chapter number six. But um, I think it was in chapter four or chapter number five, Caiaphas says they named some of them same people who did accuse Jesus um, when, when he was tried, when he was tried. Um, Another question or comment. <clears throat> now I want to hear Sunday morning for you all. I, I probably would have brought it out Sunday morning, but I went in class Sunday morning. But in, in chapter 6, before we go to 7, when I was saying about the Hellenistic group, I am a little bit unclear about the Hellenistic complaining of um, the widow being ne neglected there. Um, because of what I understand about the Hellenistic, that is the period of time, the, the 400 year period before Jesus, right? They, well, had a, they had a period within there that they people just basically kind of did what they wanted to do. They kind of made up their way of doing things on their own. Um, is, is, that, is that that period? Let, let me just give you the, um, the definition I have. So, so the definition I have is a Greek-speaking Jew. Um, they were Greek-speaking Jews. Um, Jews by birth or religion who speak Greek, Jewish people of foreign Jews and proselytes, whether converted to Christianity or not. Um, and then later, a vision telling us. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure about, it may be related to the period you're speaking of. Let me see. Yeah, I'm not sure about um, the, the, the time frame you're speaking of. I'll have to go back and take a look at that a little farther, Sister McCutton, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, I meant to call you before that. Right. <laughs> so I do that one on one. Yeah, yeah so. I, get, I want to get it. Yeah, but from my understanding, from the definitions I read, they were Greek speaking um, Jews who were more than likely born outside of. Palestine, out of Jerusalem. So when they, uh, you know, on the day of Pentecost, when all of them came back, this was one of the groups that were now residing in Jerusalem after the conversion of, of, of those who started coming into the church. Uh, go ahead, Brother Buddy. Uh, chapter 6, verse 3. The seven guys that were chosen, you mentioned earlier, there's a debate that could have been deep and there was an overseer. But um, I just want to say that they had an administrative task to do a particular task. Mm -hmm. um, and they were overseeing the, 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 the scrivening of the food properly. So, um, but the qualification was still the same. You have to be a full of the Holy Spirit, you have to be yeah. wise, you have to be spiritually mature, and, and and you have to be, you know, wise in order to carry out such responsibility of, of such great deal. So I don't know if you would call them overseer or deacon or just a minister, they just had a minister and you know the truth of the matter qualification yeah that's what I'm saying but I'm just saying the truth of the matter that's a qualification for every child of God right? yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know I think that's why the Bible when it talks about leadership over in uh, 1 Timothy the third chapter 
the Bible is saying you need to exemplify this already. You know, before you come into this office, this should be a part of your makeup, a part of who you are. You know, um, unfortunately, some people they believe that they put somebody in the office later on, they exemplify these characteristics. No, you already need to be operating in these characteristics, and then once you know you officially placed in that office, it's pretty much just a public recognition, if you will. Um, it, it's not for you to get ready. You need to be getting ready before the time of you publicly being selected. But back to my original thought, you know, that's the characteristic of all of us because at the end of the day, when they said choose the seven men, they said choose them from among, among you. Among you, right. yeah. So somebody out there, <laughs> it sounds like, you know, remember when uh, Abraham was talking to God? If there's 50 righteous people down here, would you destroy this city? <laughs> Abraham said, God said, yep, yeah. 20, mm -hmm. yep, yeah. 10, yep, yeah. <laughs> 7. Abraham didn't say that, but I'm just saying 7. Yeah. You know, amongst God's people, somebody should be living a life. All of us can't be faking it until we make it. <laughs> somebody better be living it. Yeah. <laughs> You talking about in this passage or just period? Uh, 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 in this passage, in, in, in this chapter, when they picked the seven, after they picked them, they went before the apostles and the apostles laid hands on them. And after that, they 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 they, they grew the 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 congregation, mm -hmm. the, the 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 disciples. They they began to grow. Yeah, yeah. When and so with the laying on of hands, that that that, that probably was an ordainment or, or some sort from God or, or the Spirit of God could have came upon them. You know, surely before they laid the hands on they had to have some part. But after they was picked, like the description, the qualification that Brother Boyd spoke of that they had they had, they had to meet a certain qualification. But after them having the qualification, they the apostles still lay hands on. Them. Yeah, yeah. So, and you know that's that's very well that they could have imparted a supernatural gift to them. Um, but go back to verse number three. Um, let's see if it's verse number three, where it says, "Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost." And wisdom whom we may appoint over this business. And then um, it goes into, you know, um, we will give ourselves the prayer and the word and so on and so forth, right? Um, but the instructions was you guys look among you. We do the appointment, right? Mm -hmm. So it was still a public affirmation, if you will, and, and, and it's very possible that they did get the impart, impartation of the supernatural Holy Ghost, you know, because that was administrated by the laying on of the apostles' hand. But at the end of the day, what we have in our dispensation is a public demonstration. When we put someone in, um, we are supporting our preacher. We are supporting the elders that we are selecting amongst them. We are going to, we, we do this publicly, you know, it, it can't be no secret where I, I grab some folks and, and next thing y'all know, Hartfield, look at your new elders. No, it needs to be where people are aware of what's taking place, you know, so if someone say, no. Uh, he ain't qualified. They, people need to have a chance to say he or she ain't. No, that's going to bring reproach on the church. It's not going to bring, you know, it's not going to bring um, you know what we need for the church. So, once that, with that being said, now those who are in leadership need to be able to 
stand their ground if it's biblically, you know, and go ahead and go forth with it, but it can't be done in a silo. It, it has to have, it has to uh, at some point be a public demonstration. You know, and we find that pattern all throughout the Bible. You know, even Jesus did it with his apostles, disciples. It, it, it wasn't no secret. Even with the miracles we're talking about. That was the point. The point was to show that in this dispensation, God is with, this is who God is using in this dispensation. He confirmed it with miracles and signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wonder if, if this is an apostle or if this is someone God called. He's confirmed. These are the ones he's using to write the New Testament because it's confirmed by wonders and miracles and signs and so on and so forth. Uh, go ahead, Brother Buddy. Oh, just add to what I know. I also think that it's that just right now, in this particular situation, that's just an ancient practice that they use, not necessarily feeling that the Holy Spirit could be, but then you do that, like you say, I want to make this public, so we're going to set apart. Make sure they show the public that you're set apart, so we just lay hands on them. No, no, no. During that time, it was the apostles, they were administering different gifts. And we can see it, I think we're going to see it in the ninth chapter. Um, we're going to see it. I don't want to get over there because we're heading that way. But uh, we're going to see it in the ninth chapter where Paul shows up and he's going to say, you know, have you received the gift? And they say, we only know the baptism of this. And he laid, him and John laid hands on them because it was imparted by the land on the Apollo says. Now, here's the caveat, the caveat. Uh, am I saying that word right? Mm -hmm. uh, Caveat. Close enough. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> but here's the thing. That, that's, that's what the Bible is showing, that the miraculous gifts were transferred by the laying on of the apostles' hand. Mm -hmm. So once the apostles died off, those who hands they laid on, you know, uh, let's just say if I was an apostle and I laid my hands on Brother Anderson. Once I die as an apostle, the 12 apostles die off. If I touched everybody in this room and y'all had a supernatural gift, the, the gift wasn't transferable to people you touched. Mm -hmm. The apostles have to literally lay hands on folks mm -hmm. in order to uh, receive the gift. And we're going to see it in Simon the Sources. Remember, he's seen by the laying on of the apostles' hands that a gift was imparted to him. And he said, man, how much did that cost? I'm willing to pay money for this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they rebuked him. They said, you can't spend money on this. You don't buy God's power. This is something that God uses and he does at his discretion. So we don't get over that. But I, uh, with my last, my last few minutes, let's turn over to chapter number seven. And I, I want to read the last the last uh, seven verses. Last seven verses. Oh God. And I might just let you guys read verse number one through fifty-three. But look what the Bible says in beginning at verse number fifty-four. It says, When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their cloths at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not the sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Now the Bible says, uh, 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 does anybody else, if you got a king, a different version, does it use a word other than he fell asleep? Everybody, Bible read, he fell asleep. 
No, verse number 60. So, you know, I, I just want to emphasize the fact that <laughs> I just want to emphasize the fact that when you die in Christ, you fall asleep. Amen. Come on, y'all. Hold on, hold on. I ain't got it for a few minutes. Come on, brother. You calling the distraction. No, I'm just messing with you. But um uh, uh, the Bible shows as people of God. When we make our transition, it is nothing more than sleep for us. Mm -hmm. It's not death. It's not annihilation. We don't have to worry. The Bible used the word that he fell asleep. And this is not the first time that God used the term fall asleep. Remember with Lazarus? Mm -hmm. He said he is asleep. They was worried. They was worried about his death. Jesus said he's asleep. That's another thing he told him. He said, you know, they said, you only 30 years old. How are you greater than Abraham and Moses? He said, before they was, I am, right? And he says, God is not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. Mm -hmm. Abraham is still around. Moses is still around. Amen. We see it on our Mount of Transfiguration, Matthew, the 17th chapter. Moses and Elijah are here. Remember, Moses was missing. Y'all remember, they, they couldn't even have a photo for Moses. God took Moses away where they couldn't even know where his body was. But the Bible says on the Mount of Transfiguration, Moses was there, right? Mm -hmm. But but the Bible talks about Stephen falling asleep after the stone. Now, this is what I want to emphasize, and it's simple. It's simple. It ain't no big point. I just want to emphasize this. If you went, well, when you, I ain't going to say if you, um, this homework, read verse 1 through 53. Read verse 1 through 53. And Stephen is preaching, but I want y'all to see something. Pretty much when Stephen is preaching, all he's doing is reading the Bible. Oh, this is good. He ain't really expounding. He's not breaking that down. Pretty much he's just reading the Bible. He reads about uh, Abraham. He reads about Moses. He reads about Joshua. He re reads about David. He, he reads about, uh, and he goes on to talk about Jesus. He's pretty much just reading the Bible. He talks about the tabernacle and Saul and so forth. But look what the Bible says, and we just read. The Bible says, one of the things that they did, verse number 57, it says, then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears. Mm -hmm. Oh, who was here Sunday evening? Who was here Sunday evening? Sunday evening, remember what we talked about? Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verse number 12. The word of God is sharp, sharp powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. The sermon between the spirit and the soul. Uh, knowing the thoughts of man. And, and I, I, I try to emphasize the fact that when we, when we read the Bible, the Bible is reading us. And, you know, uh, um, the Bible is a mirror. James says it. When we look in the perfect law of liberty, we look in the perfect law of liberty not for just reflection. We look for Correct. Amen. We don't look in it just to say, oh, I'm messed up and uh, I'm sinful and look at me and uh, I'm just messed up and my hair out of place and uh, slobber is still running down my mouth. No, when you look in the mirror at home, you make the adjustments necessary, right? Mm -hmm. So when we look at it, if we don't make the corrections, it will, as Sister McCutcheon alluded to, it will burn our conscience up. When we can have a clear conscience, when we make the necessary corrections. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's the liberty that comes with Christ Jesus. We don't have to carry the burden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I admit, I'm not about to fake it for y'all. No. I'm not about to be faking for y'all. For what? <laughs> if God know all my business, he know who I am, and I'm about to come in here and try to fake and act like I'm, I don't make no mistakes, for what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't about to be I, it's too much work as sister <laughs> as my sister said. I ain't got time to be coming up in here acting like somebody who I'm not. Now as Christ mature me, you're gonna see more maturity in me. Amen. 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 
But I'm not about to come in here and, and try to act like somebody I seen or somebody who you want me to be. <laughs> Nobody can be a better Henry than him. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Nobody can be a better uh, McCutcheon than Brother McCutcheon. Amen. Amen. You got to be who you are, but you got to be willing to look in the perfect law of liberty and right. allow God right. to ultimately make the, the corrections that need to be made in your life. Amen. But it's not, it's not about, it's not about knowing you naked and sewing on fig leaves. Amen. No, it ain't about that. It ain't about that because if you put on fig leaves, that's not the covering that you need. Amen. The covering you need is the blood of Jesus. <laughs> because without the, without the shedding of the blood, there's no remission of sins. Amen. So we, we can put on, uh, y'all know how we do it. I'm about to call the roll. I'm waiting on the class, so I'm also going to call the roll. Y'all know how we do it. We put on Church clothes, <laughs> look churchy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, I bet. I do I look churchy tonight? <laughs> Amen. You know, uh, uh, oh, that's another thing I wanted to touch on. <laughs> See, what Stephen was dealing with, he was dealing with their traditions. Mm -hmm. and, and it was just eating them up because you got to understand the temple was a central, a central, a central element of their religion. Right. And when Stephen started talking about the temple, that Christ is greater than the temple, that was temporarily, and it's really no salvation in that. That just burned them up. Mm -hmm. And he talking about Moses, Moses, mm -hmm. and Abraham did. That's how, that's how I feel important. Abraham is my great, 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 great mm -hmm. uncle. You talking about Abraham ain't nothing. It's all about Christ. It just burned them <laughs> up. And as the body of Christ, I know we, we, we talk against the traditions of men, but we better be careful that we don't create our own traditions and try to hold people to our own traditions. Amen. Amen. Oh, let me say that again. It's worth saying again. It's worth saying again. Uh, uh, sometimes, you know, we can get caught up in our own traditions mm -hmm. and what's not really essential, we, as they say, we'll begin to major and minor. And minor and majors. Instead of putting the emphasis on Christ and salvation in the blood, we start. What 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 color is that? What color is the? Amen. The carpet. Amen. What color? Okay. Uh, let me leave it alone. Uh, uh, he he ain't have on no tie today. <laughs> What he doing at the table? <laughs> he ain't got no King James version. He ain't got no NIV. He ain't got no Amplified. See, now you create traditions. God ain't putting emphasis on that. Because of the truth of the matter, it's all going to come down to faith. Amen. Y'all know the Bible wasn't written in English anyway. It was written in Greek. It was written, written in Aramaic. It was written in Hebrew. So the truth of the matter, it's been handled by many men. Mm -hmm. When we believe it, we still got to have an element of faith. Mm -hmm. We didn't translate this. We don't have we don't have access to the Dead Sea Scrolls and all those old uh, um, documents. We believe by faith. Yes. Amen. And you know why I believe Amen. by faith? Because I know the correction that it has done in my life. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's where our testimony comes in. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. If you don't believe in the Bible, you don't want to read the Bible, I, I know what it done for me. Amen. Amen. That's it. I know how it changed my life. Mm -hmm. I know I was on the road to destruction yes. if God hadn't have came in my life. I know I wouldn't have been as wise as I am now if God wouldn't have came in my life. Or the devil would have been able to fool me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But he made me wiser. He made me stronger. He made me uh, uh, more astute. So, so that's where our testimony come in. And as the Revelation writer said, we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. our testimony. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just want to point, as you read that, keep that in mind, that Stephen is breaking down all their traditions. And he's just reading the Bible to them pretty much. And that's why it's important to read the Bible. Sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, it, it may seem like I don't, I don't understand it all. But keep reading it. 
Allow it to get in your mind. Later on, God will reveal. Amen. Mm -hmm. He put the seeds in you, and then it have a chance to bloom. It have a chance to flourish. But if ain't no seeds in you, mm -hmm. okay, I'm leaving y'all alone. I'm leaving y'all because I know I'm telling the truth. Because here's the thing: even with the Holy Spirit, we we have the Holy Spirit, right? We live by the Holy Spirit, but He leads us by His Word. Amen. We can't say I'm just led by the Holy Spirit. No, the Holy Spirit reveals the word that we read in us. Mm -hmm. But if ain't nothing to reveal in us, how the Holy Spirit gonna lead us? Mercy. He ain't got nothing to work with, right? So, so the word is important. And I, I, um, I, I, I'll tell them again, but one of the things that I want to do with this class is, you know, I know we do a lot of reading. The reason I do that is because when we look at Bible, the Bible and Bible verses, the best way to interpret Scripture is with Scripture. Amen. It's, and you see it all through the New Testament. They just refer back to the Old Testament. This is what it was saying, and this is what's revealed right here. That's the best way to uh, uh, interpret Scripture is by Scripture. And last but not least, if you take a text out of context, mm -hmm. you are left with nothing but a comma. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> you need the text to be in the context. Yeah. That's why it's important not to isolate scriptures and try to build a whole doctrine on one scripture. Mm -hmm. You need to look at the whole, the whole context of what's being said. Right. Because when you isolate a scripture, now you don't build a whole doctrine, build a whole religion on an isolated scripture. Mm -hmm. No, in the context, of the chapter in context of the book in the context of the scheme of redemption what is God saying mm -hmm. that's how you get what God is saying mm -hmm. but when you isolate one thing mm -hmm. amen let's just isolate and y'all probably heard this one before someone said um, if you isolate scripture where it says Judas went out and hung himself and then you grab another scripture and say you do likewise who gonna do that that's an isolated scripture though but if you study it in this context you can understand what was taking place there amen, amen. and that's what Stephen is doing so on tonight on tonight um, we thank God for the opportunity to read his word and to gather around his word the Bible tells us when we hear the word our response ought to be belief it ought to be faith when we don't know the Lord and our partner, partner of our sins we got to be willing to repent, change our way of thinking. We got to be willing to confess him, even before man, even if it caused harm and people don't like our confession, we got to be willing to confess him. Amen. If we've never been born again, we got to be willing to put the Lord on in the word, grace, and baptism. Galatians says, Galatians 3.27 says, we are baptized into Christ Jesus. We can do that all tonight. And as a child of God, as a child of God, if we see ourselves in the passage where we just want to be strong and we want to be bold and stable, we want to be able to have the tenacity. Even if death is imminent, I'm not going to deny my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it's one thing to say it, but it's another thing to do it. Right, y'all? Mm -hmm. Peter said it. Oh, Lord, I'll never deny it. But we've seen Stephen do it. Amen. So it's one thing to say something, but it's another thing for God to put it in your heart and your mind when you are able to follow it all the way through. So on tonight, if you have a request, we want you to make it known. We're going to sing a select.